What should a board of directors expect from the CEO of the company? I guess I would boil that down into three things. Number one, I think they have a right to expect absolute candor. Two, I think they have a right to expect information that can be backed up. And then number three, and this is only in a perfect world, no surprises. Let me violate that third one right away because there are always surprises. So when a surprise happens, the answer is not to try to fix it. The answer is to disclose it and then go to work on it. Boards do not expect that everything runs perfectly. They get very nervous when the CEO um, pretends that everything is under control and that they are in charge. They know that the world doesn't really work that way. So if there is a good relationship between board leadership and the CEO, the board leadership, the chair of the board, will know almost at the same time the CEO does that something is happening that was not exactly the way either of them wished it was. But they'll, they'll go to work on it. Um, as I said, the board doesn't expect the CEO to know all the solutions. They do expect the CEO to have the facts, to know what's going on, to, to understand what's going on, but their, their the, the CEO's powers of prediction are not necessarily better than anyone else's. That's, if they knew what was going to happen, it wouldn't be a problem. One of the things that, sh that, a, that a CEO should never do, and, I, and this is kind of an amplification of, of the first rule of absolute candor, the CEO should never, never, never fudge the numbers. Not for the inside people, not for the outside people. Um, I think there was maybe a time when um, CEOs would say, well, we'll tough it through and the next quarter will be better. Um, we'll land that big contract and things will just look and feel a lot better. So there's no reason to get into that now. If that was ever acceptable, it is not acceptable today. Uh, it's, it's absolutely important. Now, how much the company discloses outside, to whom, and on what schedule, is another matter. I mean, it may have obligations under the law. If, it's, uh, if you're involved in consumer products, for example, and there's a recall, um, there can be personal liability if you don't discharge the obligations that you have under the various laws of the United States and the states in which you operate. So those are individual decisions. If it's just some internal matter that doesn't affect any outside party, well, there can be conversation among the board members and the, and the management team as to when and how, under what circumstances, you should go public with information. Public companies are required, under the law, to disclose all material developments, and they have to file a special report with the SEC. So I, I think that developing, again, developing that mentality, especially in a later stage company, in a company that's, that's in a high growth or almost ready for the exit, almost ready for a liquidity event, it's very important to start thinking like, and even if the law doesn't require it, in my view, it's good practice to start acting as if uh, the company were public. Say, what would we do if we had the duty of disclosure that is involved in public companies? What does it do to a board of directors when a CEO springs su surprises on them, things they didn't expect? How does that impact the relationship among them? Well, nobody likes, a, nobody likes a surprise, and nobody, maybe except a wet baby, likes a change. So every board member would love to have a situation where life unfolded exactly according to the business plan. But they all know better. They know it won't unfold that way. So I would say it's a question of what, what's the surprise? Was it foreseeable? And is it correctable? So, as I said, a board doesn't expect management to be able to predict events, but it does expect management to know its numbers, to know the internal stuff and in the, in the where they expect it to know where the company is at a given time. Then collaboratively, collectively, and work, holding hands together, the board and the management team can fashion 
a response. Now, when I, when I talk about these things and, and the duty of candor, obviously there are some details that, are, that don't rise to the level of materiality. Public company, and the SEC defines materiality as something that would have an effect in the mind of the average investor. So if, if, if the price of wheat goes up 20%, but wheat is only a half a percent of your cost structure, well, that probably isn't something that would change anybody's point of view. If, on the other hand, when I was in the bagel business, wheat was a very important driver, and so a, an increase in the cost of wheat even smaller than that would be a material event and one that should be brought immediately to the attention of the board. So it obviously depends on what's the issue, how material is it to the company, that is to say, What's the magnitude of the impact and how likely is it to happen? When you put those two together, you'll know when you should disclose it to your board.